Hey guys, this is the Hard for Games FAQ Part 2. We're right on the set of our latest review, a stall for the Sega Saturn. You can look for that somewhere in the next six months. Uh -huh. I have a question. Who created that awesome theme song for you? You guys are hilarious and TJ is okay in my book. Cut you go with that. I created the theme song for our show. Thank you for the compliment. And in fact, I create most of the music for the show that is not taken from the games themselves. Uh -huh. We haven't had a lot of music for our show lately because I've been busy as hell and my asshole hurts a lot. Uh -huh, it does. However, me and Tony did that crazy beatboxing scene. That was all us. How did you guys start out? Uh, well, we sat around in Tony's basement uh, far too long, and then eventually we were just like, damn, we play the jam a lot. We should just make a review for this. And then we started reviewing under a very uh, phallic reference for a name. What? I don't see it. But okay. M me either. It's been it's been sad. John, games are hard, and we're hard for games. Yeah. Yes. Come on. And the number four <laughs> reflected that there were originally three of us. Exactly, but we offed one of them. One good question: Why does John like the Virtual Boy? I got motion sickness just looking at it. Um, I love the Virtual Boy because I hate eyesight. Yeah, yeah, I think that's about what what it should have been. Six ninety five, and it gives you retinal cancer. <laughs> that right there. That's all I ask. Is that so much? I don't know how you got that from our John's thoughts on the Virtual Boy video. He was laughing hysterically at it and said it would give you retinal cancer. Anyway, I want to know why you chose the name Hard for Games. I know the meaning, but the whole process of choosing is what I want. Also, what do you all do besides making videos and playing games? We thought about calling ourselves Retrograde and the Megabits, i.e. like... Sort of a band like sort of name. Diana Ross and the Supremes. We thought the Jams, you know, because NBA Jam, Marv's Angels was a possibility. <laughs> the Megabits. Uh, but I kind of just put it in as a joke, Hard for Games, because it kind of like had a ring to it. Like, oh, this week on Hard for Games. You can just say it as if there's no innuendo, and it just like rolls <laughs> off the tongue, but yet there is that innuendo. So then we decided to go with that, ultimately. Mm -hmm. I was opposed, but... Were you? I, I think I was. Really? He was one <laughs> you don't remember that from our discussion about it? No, I don't. Were you ultimately won over? Eventually, I was won over because you let me make it the four in the middle. Oh, yeah, because we were originally hard F O R games. And then it was hard space numeral four space games. And now it's. Okay, Sheet. and uh, for what do you all do besides uh, making videos and playing games? Let Richie start again. I write music and masturbate. <laughs> I uh, am a filmmaker and a martial arts instructor. Uh, right now I'm going to college for botanical and zoological ecology. Oh, you I'm guys are taking this as like, I thought it was like a hobbies question. I, I go to school for pharmacy. <laughs> He's well, also a chronic masturbator. Yeah. Oh, uh, the next one is from, uh, they call me The Fizz, which is one of our longest-running uh, uh, fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What inspired the filming of the Factual Expositions Outdoors? Um, it was primarily because in the beginning, John would just sit there and not say anything. So we decided, why not give him a Only segment? Only in the beginning. <laughs> uh, we decided, why not give him a segment where it could just feature him? Actually, originally, our, our idea was really fucked up, and it never really even worked. It was that I was going to talk about gameplay, Richie was going to talk about music, and then John was going to do expositional-type stuff, but that's a terrible formula, and we never implemented it, even in our first episode. But we kept the idea of John doing the expositional-type stuff, and it's like, how do you really do exposition and make it interesting? Well, you do something wacky. You get out of the space that you're in, so it's kind of like, you know, fresh. You know, get a breath of fresh air, get out of the house, do something yeah. outside. There's only so long you can stare at this business behind us. Yeah. Oh my god, this channel is awesome. How did I live without this in my life? Great videos, mates. Uh, well, first off, uh, we're, I don't believe we're your mates because we've never mated, but, um... Might have. <sighs> How did you live without it? it? It was sort of... We finally fixed you, really. You you were sort of just always without us. Yes. Do you have the Concord keys? 
How about beta questing Super Mario 64? Maybe you can find Luigi or stuff or secrets and Easter eggs. Whoa, Tony, you're not going to cheat at Legend of Zelda, are you? Din is not going to be happy about the. Please don't! Don't! I don't knew know. it is! Oh! As I said in the first beta quest video, I am retired from beta questing altogether. As for the other guys, what do you guys think? I am also retired after doing it for two episodes. Actually, three episodes if you count the fact that we split the first mm -hmm. one in two. But uh, I just... I'm really interested in the beta of Zelda 64. I'm not interested as much in the beta of Mario 64. I mean, Zelda has all this mythology to it, and it has, like, an in-depth story, but Mario is essentially just a weak story and a platformer. So with, like, Zelda, it's like you're trying to find out what was, like, what the story was, what elements were in there. With Mario, it's like, oh, this aesthetically looked different, or I think that people have found, found some, like, beta keys that mm -hmm. don't appear in the game. And honestly, like... Mario 64 didn't go through as many changes as Zelda 64 did. It didn't start off on the disk drive platform. Off. Whoa. Off. Whoa. Whoa. That's wacky. Nice little way to mask loading times. Good job, Nintendo. And I think there's just less stuff left over, I think, and I'm just less interested in it overall, to be honest. I have no intention of beta questing Mario 64 whatsoever. Uh, wait. Why only 505 subs? Your content is way better than that. We're over 900, man. Why don't you go back and edit this? What's wrong with you? <laughs> um, also, I wish we had over 9,000 subs, really. Yeah. So. Currently, we have a little bit over 900. Hopefully, by the time this video is released, maybe it's near 1,000, 1,000 plus. A million. But hey, I mean, if you like our videos so much, and we hope that you do, obviously, tell your friends, tell grandma. Subscribe to us, watch our stuff, write us into your wills. It's all we ask. Yes. Oh, that's a good one right there. Oh. Okay, so one question that I get quite a bit is how I got an N64 disk drive. Uh, no, that says, how get N64 <laughs> that, that, DD? That was me. He said that that was a question he frequently got, it, and that was my shorthand for it. <laughs> how get that spelling? <laughs> okay, so how did I get a N Nintendo 64 disk drive? Okay, our friend TJ went to Japan and... Found one, but it was $700. I think so, it might have been more than that. So, you know, I searched on eBay, and at the time, there weren't very many. One would pop up periodically and be like anywhere between $500 and $700. For whatever reason, now, just like a few, like a year later, there's actually like five or six N64 disk drives at any given time on eBay. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happened. We have singular handedly popularized that system. Oh, hell yeah, we have. Oh, give me a little bit of that love. It's coming man. back, baby. Um, it's not. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I found one one day that was a junk system, which is essentially a Japanese term that means it's untested. Doesn't mean that it doesn't work, but it means that it might not work. So it was $150 on eBay plus $50 shipping. So I'm like, I guess I'll try it. It also came with a uh, Japanese N64. So it came, I'm like... All came right. At least half the equation, and yeah. it could be used for parts potentially. So. Yeah. So I, I got it. I'm like, all right. And I had previously purchased Ocean the Giant as an amazing paperweight. Uh, <laughs> so of course it was useless at the time. Do you have any games? <laughs> Maybe do a uh, shot that's a little zoomed in. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, there we are. So I put in Doge and the Giant. I put in my four megabyte expansion pack. Plugged it in, didn't load up. I'm like, fuck me, this was a bad gamble. And then I'm like, wait a minute. The expansion pack I put in was an off-brand expansion pack. I had another N64, popped in uh, name brand expansion pack, loaded up, everything worked. I had an N64 disk drive that was in working condition. Because uh, it was just something we had been, like, fantasizing about uh, sexually yeah. for a long period of time. Like, yes. oh my god. We and what a that. release. And <laughs> what a release it was. Okay. Alright. Oh. So 
So that pretty much rounds out... Hold up. This line of questioning has actually reminded me of another question that she said was frequently asked. Okay. Do we only do retro games? Oh, yeah. Um, no. We just tend to because it's cheap as hell. We have been doing more, like, new reviews, like, that are written reviews on our site. And then we did the new NBA Jam, and then we did the new Sonic, and we're going to start doing a few more newer games. Yeah. But one of the things I like about retro games, other than the fact that they tend to be cheaper, though that's not always true, is that they're from our childhood, so I think there's, like, a nostalgia factor. And it's also, like, interesting to see the history of gaming. Like, honestly, I'm not, like, a speedrunner. I'm not amazing at video games, but I really, really enjoy them. It's bad. It's not true. I'm decent. But the he point is, is we're, we're more like historians, honestly. Like, well, I would like to do more new ones, too, but feel free to send them to us. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> Guys, put the fists in the middle. Um, our powers combined. We are hard for Yay! Yay! Let's, uh, let's figure out a, a more interesting way to get out of it, maybe. Alright, or is that good? That's probably good. Alright, well, whatever. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. Maybe I'll stop getting... Cry a little bit. <laughs> Cry loud. <laughs> right there, that's that is. Look at that. This method acting is what it is. It is method Let's just, let's just save the world from that. There we are. Certainly kept me. Holy crap, what? These are the guys from Mario Paint, but in 3D. That's amazing.